Okay, I'm going to show you real quick how to tie a anchor on the correct way because I see a lot of people still doing it wrong. This is really simple and really easy. Lay your rope out there. Get your favorite anchor. Lay it like that. There you go. Works good. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Hello, it's Alan Baldwin back here with High Valley Angler. Um, I want to take a minute to show you how I'm going to switch over anchors in my boat because there's still some people that actually don't know the proper way to tie an anchor on, as odd as that may sound. But the uh, reason I'm switching over, I've got this is the anchor I had before and this one that way if I needed to anchor front and back of the boat I had an anchor for both so between the two of these anchors they take up a lot of space and they each weigh 15 pounds a piece so I'm carrying 30 pounds of weight in the boat right there so I decided to replace it with these two anchors and I may not like them once I try them. They're, they both together only weigh three pounds. So they're aluminum. Yeah, unhook that. These open up when you drop it in the water. And should dig into about any kind of bottom you got. Other than maybe solid rock, which neither one or then the other one would just be holding you by weight. But these should dig in. Hold me where I need. But you see, there's this little eyelet on the bottom of the anchor. A lot of people will just run their rope through and tie up here and consider it done. I bought these and put on, they're stainless, they're about $6 a piece, I think. If you buy just regular metal ones, half that price. Actually, they're only $0.69, cents, I think, for the galvanized, or the uh, regular metal. I just don't want them rusting up and getting weak be my weak part later on so I'll show you how I do it first thing is get rid of the tag some people already know how to rig anchors like this the other type you'd have to weld something on and make it work the way I'm going to show you does is let you retrieve your anchor if it gets stuck in the water. There's several ways to uh, put your rope on. Either put heat shrink on here or do like I've done and take a lighter or some torch, melt the cheesy end together where it can't unravel on you. And you can take black tape. around the end with black tape. If you got heat shrink tape or heat shrink plastic and put on, it's probably the best way to do your frayed ends or to protect them from fraying out. Once you go through here, there's several things you can do. One thing you can do if you want to take the time, just open each one of these, feed it up through. Just skipping over each one. But you get the point there after you, I missed one there, but. After you get through it, you pull them all down until you have it all braided through. I've missed one there, it's pretty obvious. But you do that with about six inches or so, and then you can go around it again with tape, 
tape it all the way down to about here. That's just one way to do it that's strong. Another way is to truly braid it, but you have to do that without this being all done like that. You have to do each strand individually, wrap them. And then what you do is you pick each one apart and you weave each one through and do a true braid where they'll it just look about like braiding here. They'll all be in, looped into each other. And then another way I do it is bring it up and I'll wrap the rope around several times. This is kind of a quick way to do it and it still has strength. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. And just bring it back down through each loop just like this. knot's going to look like. And you can take this end if you leave it longer and do one around here. But doing it just like that's going to work fine. And then up here at this end, you know, I got to grab and put a cheap string through here or probably different things you could use. This is the way I do it. Put that on there. That's all you got. Now the reason you do that, <clears throat> if um, say this were to get caught in a treetop, underwater, are wedged in in a rock, and the harder you pull, the tighter it digs in. Rather than lose your anchor and a bunch of rope that somebody else can get caught up in, if you pull hard enough, whether by hand or just using the power of the boat motor itself, you give a tug. This will break. Let your rope come up here. Picks it right up. You got your anchor back. So that's how I'll be rigging mine up. And I'm hoping these anchors are going to do the job holding my boat still. If I get in a place where they're not, there's no bottom that they can dig into, it's solid rock, and the two of them together won't hold me there, then I guess I'll be drift fishing or using a trolling motor to try to hold myself still. With that's just a quick little tip, especially that's what I like about these is the fact that you can put these on they've already got a hole in there, it makes it pretty simple. The other type anchors I had there, if you noticed on them, you'd have to actually weld something on the bottom or make a way to uh, attach a rope down there. But I hope it's beneficial to you. And I'll add a few more tricks I do, different things like this. And the other end, if you buy a rope already made, they come with a snap on them. This one here, it's going on my other one. This is how it was already pre made up on the other end which is good. It's done nice. It's got the heat shrink on it. And a good quality snap. The one I rigged up that I had on one of my anchors. You can see I took the time to weave it in the way I was talking about. When you weave it in, that's what the, the weave will look like. Nice and square. And I put two snaps on. Now, I'll tell you the reason why I done it is I had one of these snaps stick one time. It might have been this one right there, as you can see. If you don't keep them greased or oiled, that can happen. And there's nothing worse than hooking that to something on a dock or, or whatever. 
you have to go get your truck and come back and see your boat drifted away because it slipped out and it actually happened to me so I will be getting grease on that I usually keep it greased but I put two that way I've got safety if this one does come off then I've got another one hooked so it never hurts to have extra take precaution it can save you getting your feet wet on a cold spring day or late fall when the water temperatures cooled way down and you have to go in after your boat like I did so everything you do treat the first step as if it's going to fail and have a second step and it'll help you out I guess I should have took the time to explain exactly what I was talking about when I was talking about hooking these to a dock or something I use my anchor rope to uh, also tie off my boat at the dock because I put in the majority of the time by myself. So what I do is actually in the back of my boat. So I have my anchors down inside the drawer. I just pull out however much rope I need to tie off to the dock, close the lid back down on it, and that secures my boat. It'd have to pull the anchor up through and open the snap on the lid and everything to get get free from me but that's the reason I'll show you in a later video exactly how I do it how I launch a boat by myself and tie things off and I've actually got a lot of little tricks of my own there that makes it real simple if you're loading and unloading a boat by yourself which a lot of people do and that'll be in another video I'll show you but just the same this here if you're anchoring it inside your boat somewhere and throwing your anchor down, you, you definitely don't want this coming and snapping and losing your anchor. Whether you snap it through one of these or just put a loop and tie it, however you want to do it. But if, if you notice, the, I put these on my boat too. That's actually floor mat rugs I got and it's sealed down there. That way every place on my boat where you could run a rope over the side, it's not going to work the finish on my boat gonna lay on there and down across here so it protects the boat but that's in another video too so just got to find a time to get some of the video editing down and get these videos on I have a lot of stuff I've been doing to put on video and get online I apologize I haven't been keeping up on posting these videos but I'll start getting some of them rolling soon and get them on and uh, some of this will be more explanatory then when you see exactly what I do as far as anchoring the boat to a dock with these. That'll be in the next video or two. And well, we're on the subject of uh, tying off your anchor. Make sure you do tie off your anchor. I mean, everybody knows how to tie on these, but the only reason I say make sure you tie off your anchors, believe it or not, there are a lot of people that do forget to tie off their anchors, and it reminds me of a story a buddy of mine told me one time. He'd found a nice spot up a creek to fish, and the current was strong, and it kept moving his, he had a john boat, kept moving it down, and he couldn't stay in the spot where the catfish were and he was catching a lot of catfish so he went home and made him up some cheap concrete anchors out of coffee cans and eye hooks and I'm sure people's familiar with those but he made two of them cut his rope in half and made tied a rope on each one and he said he went up the next weekend to the same spot got up there located the place where the fish were and he said he walked to the front of the boat and grabbed the first anchor and threw it over and walked back to the back of the boat he said got the other anchor and threw it over into the water and he said he turned around to sit down to get his pole ready and seen the end of the rope from the front one go off into the water and realized he didn't tie it to the boat anywhere he ran up and tried to reach into the water to grab it and it was too late and missed it so he turned around and looked at the back just in time to see the back one go in the water so he lost two anchors in the water and uh, said he was unable to retrieve the rope so 
he lost both anchors in one shot because he didn't tie them off to the rope or to the boat. And to uh, make his day worse, he said he got onto some more catfish and he kept catching them, putting them on the stringer, and uh, kept having to fight the boat in the current, keep it where it was at, and keep fishing. And he said he had the stringer almost full and he had it tied to the side of his boat. And he said every time he added another fish he'd unhook the stringer and bring it up in the boat put his fish on and put it back in the water and reattach the stringer well the last fish he put on he said he dropped the stringer back overboard and was watching he said it was a real nice catfish was watching it swimming around and he realized it was swimming farther than what the stringer should have reached and he said he got to looking and he hadn't attached the stringer back to the boat so he lost two anchors and a stringer full of catfish all in one shot so just a little reminder when you're out there to make sure you do tie your anchor off somewhere. Mine, like I said, according to the depth I need, it'll be wrapped around one of the eyes on the boat. But this most likely will be inside of the one of the doors, which I keep them closed and latched so that the door can't come open. So it's kind of an extra safety thing there, but probably should go an extra step and, and put an eyelid in somewhere inside the compartment where the snap can go on. That's just another little added thing. It hasn't happened to me, but it has happened to people, so just a little reminder, do make sure you're anchored good to something in your boat and not just the bottom of the water. So, I want to get this interior this boat cleaned up now we're in the shop back in here and I bought some stuff to shampoo the carpet I know it doesn't make a lot of sense to do that before starting the fishing season but helps preserve everything it looks better the first time out on the water the uh, treatment for the carpet will help prevent mud and UV rays and stuff from damaging it so I'm going to get busy on that and Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informational to you. Thank you, thank you. Keep it down, keep it down. I just wanted to take a minute uh, while I was thinking about tying ropes and stuff to mention it probably isn't a bad idea that everybody carries some kind of tow rope in their boat. You never know when you're going to break down and need towed or run into another angler out on the water that's having trouble and maybe needs towed. Uh, so with that in mind, I wanted to take a minute and show you a few other things that I think is important to have with you that maybe not everybody has in their boat. Naturally, you want to keep all your typical first aid stuff in your boat and all the stuff that's required by your state. You'll have to check in your local state to see what is required to have on your boat. Okay, make sure, well, that's probably a must in every state's fire extinguisher. If it's not, I'd highly recommend one. Um, this is something else most people don't carry that I recommend. good old can of whatever you want to call it bear spray or mace pepper spray something because you never know what you're going to run into out on the water you might be fishing along a cliff on a lake or a creek or something and with all the wild cats and stuff that's running around now it's just a good idea to keep something like that with you um wire ties I think everybody should have some of those you never know when you're going to have to do a little repairs out on the water uh, paper towels of some type I think is a must definitely a first aid kit well, I guess to get this out first I keep a variety of patch cords and I don't feel that you have to carry yours in a expensive uh, case like I've got here. It's not 
mandatory that you have a high quality case such as mine but actually what I'm going to put those in because it should be in waterproof but I keep spare cables for everything here's a spare bulb for the front of my boat um, I've got charger for my cell phone charger for uh, a headlamp I have here which I think everybody should have some type of flashlight or light like this I like this one because I can see to work on something at night and just same it's bright enough I can actually drive this boat with it at night it's super bright LED but it is rechargeable so I don't need to worry about batteries in it because it is rechargeable uh, charger for GoPro cameras and stuff spare batteries for video cameras it's good to have all your spare cables you need with you and you should keep them in a something watertight like this rather than that um, as I started to say you should have first aid kit you never know when you're going to need it or another angler out on the water might need it it could be helpful uh, this container works really good for storing toilet paper in it's actually an empty pretzel one I recommend carrying some toilet paper with you because you never know when you're out there when nature's going to come calling and you're going to have to blow your nose so uh, toilet paper works good for that then I keep a a little tool kit together just in case I need to do some repairs or somebody else does out on the water field glasses I don't know if you ever need them but I keep a pair in here um, besides that light that I showed you a minute ago probably should carry some type of spotlight like this when you're out on the water especially if you're going to be out at night and sometimes you're out don't plan on being out at night but if you break down and are having trouble and run late it's nice to have a light to get back in with and see what's going on so those are just a few things that I think you should have out on the water outside of what is required by your state but Hopefully those are a few things that can help you out and uh, make your time a little more pleasant out on the water. So, until I see you again, uh, tight lines and bent rods to everyone. And uh, don't forget to click the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And if you get the chance, take a kid or someone fishing that hasn't had the experience of enjoying fishing and introduce them to something that can be as pleasurable to them as you and we all know kids these days need something like fishing in their life to occupy them so hey get out there on the water and have fun and i'll catch you again soon